So essentially, the project would be bid, and you'll get a number in terms of what the project would be without the administrative lien or with the administrative lien. So it helps kind of control the overall project cost, give you an idea of just how much you're spending for that, that portion of the project. I'm going to go to the next slide. This shows the changes. Now, I really just want to focus on administrative lien at this point. The great out area is the area that we're suggesting is part out of the main building. And we had to tweak the floor plan somewhat. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide. This is a blow up of that side of the building. And you, you can see, especially at the lower portion in the nature classroom, some of the geometries of the spaces, spaces have changed, notably the toilet room and the, the shape of the toilet room down below. And the shape of the nature classroom. But essentially, it's pretty much the same. What we wanted to do is we wanted to actually create, draw or create a line demarcation between the edge of the toilet room, the large toilet room, and the nature classroom. So we're trying to make this as easy as possible for somebody to bid the project and not to make it too convoluted in terms of uh, the numbers we have might receive and and also make it so it would be easy for future expansion if that was ever the case. If you went with the the base without the expansion and then later decided to add on to it. To that end, we're gonna go to the next slide. One of the things we had to look at is originally we looked at this project as having a centralized mechanical space, air air handling, air handlers actually. We proposed creating a loft mechanical loft above where their reception desk is. But in light of parsing off the administrative wing and talking to our engineer, it seemed like it might be easier just to create separate mechanical, mechanical rooms or separate air handlers, X units, you might call it. And this, in this way, then each space is zoned. I mean, clearly the, the the barn portion is one large space, and the central portion, the lobby, is one, you consider one or two zones. And of course, administrative wing is a zone on its own. The nice thing about this is that from the point of view of bidding, when we do our, our construction step, it makes it easier for the contractors to put the bid together. So it's, it's not like saying, okay, you're coming off of the main trunk of the centralized mechanical unit. And if you don't do that alternate, uh, then you're gonna have to reduce the size of your ductwork. Where in this case, it's really a standalone type thing. So the mechanicals are independent for that one uh, administrative section of, of the building. So not to quote like a computer term, but it's kind of like plug and play. I'm gonna go to the next, next one. So then the other thing that we looked at the last few months, and Rich alluded to it, was reanalyzing the, the kitchen that we had uh, originally planned for the building. And the original kitchen, I, I mean, it was, it, was, it was pretty bare bones, quite honestly. It was basically just for, for catering, and we didn't even have a stove in it or anything like that. Over the past couple months, I was able to meet with uh, Ryan Richardson from uh, Conway Orchard just to kind of pick his brain on what he, his thoughts were about um, catering and you know, what the needs would be of somebody who was coming into this space providing meals and, and, and whatnot. And looking at the plan, the first thing that struck him is he said, you know, no, the kitchen is just too small. And he noted also that we have the storage for the chairs and the tables above that space and thought, well, you know, we could absorb some of that perhaps for the kitchen. Um, the other thing he talked about was, was flow in terms of the carts, which if you look there's like little boxes, you, know, you get the little hand on that. No, 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 below that. Those little boxes are actually selling those those um, catering trays that they wheel out and all the meals are on those. Um, you know, looking at flow in terms of how they would actually take that, those meals, get them prepped, either pre pre prepared or not, and getting them on trays to serve the people. So 
So he suggested, you know, maybe when I incorporate an island into the kitchen. So if you want to go to the next slide, this is revised kitchen. And essentially what we ended up doing is we took that storage room that was in the back, took that entire storage room, absorbed it into the kitchen, and then we added a few feet to the left, which reduced the size of the program room slightly, but really, I think, created a much more functional kitchen. So now if you look at the kitchen, as you walk in the, that door, all those bending carts, figuring carts, are lined up against the outside wall. And then there's an island in the center, so you can see how that would be, you know, things come in and they kind of prep them and they come out the door to serve. One of the other things we did, uh, I mean, another thing to point out about the kitchen is that kitchen was never just for catering. It has, you know, serious other functions, one of which is bend for bending for when there's uh, events outside. So what we, how we address that is that these carts that we're showing on the outside wall are, are actually not going to be there in most, most cases unless there's actually something being catered. So we're showing that bending window in the outside wall, and that's Walter, if you can point it out. Yeah, right there. And then we created a small dry storage room above the kitchen, which is meant for the kitchen, but we thought, well, you know, if you have some rolling carts or if you have supplies for venting, you can bring those out during those type of instances. Uh, the other thing that we did, one of the things that we wanted to do was to, one of the program, program things that we talked about, having like demonstrations, cooking demonstrations. And the original plan, we didn't really have a perfect solution for that. We were going to actually roll out on a, like a cart, like you see in chemistry class, you might, you might say, where you actually have a home act. But here, what, we, what we've done is we've actually created a, a cabinet right there in a rolling shutter. And because the kitchen being larger and that sink being behind that, that space, we were able to create a much more usable demonstration demonstration type kitchen. So, you know, the, the rolling started to come up, they had demonstrations, the sink would be behind them. We actually added a stove, which of course will entail adding a hood, but we're just thinking of very small type hood. We have a refrigerator, we have a hand sink down there. So it's, it's and a triple daisy sink. So it's actually, I think it kind of serves those three functions pretty well, you know. I mean, ultimately, everything could be larger. You can always use more space. One of the things Ryan told me was that, you know, typically when you go in situations when they're catering, that they'll work with the space that they have. But what, it ha what happens is it limits what they can actually do and what they can actually provide to people. So I think in, in turn, that would probably limit to what you could actually maybe rent out the, the barn activity center for. You know, if you can only get certain types of foods, you know, um, it's going to limit what you're going to be able to do with, with that in terms of generating revenue, I would imagine. So the other thing that this plan shows, no, let's go back, <laughs> is, you know, we have to still address the issue of storage and the storage of the uh, carts, uh, tables and chairs, sorry, not carts. So what we've done is we actually created a, a closet across the hallway above the reception area. You know, we, we thought about, you know, you have that program center across the way, you know, you probably could store some stuff in there, but really, if it's winter, I mean, it's now. I mean, are you going to really be wheeling stuff out in, in the snow to, uh, to set up tables and chairs? And I think the tables and chairs are good during functions when you have the need for those type of things, but if you're going to use this for other activities, you really want to be able to break those things down easily. So we put the uh, tables and chairs, we allowed for space in it, for it, over there. We ended up absorbing some of the storage that was for that, that office. But, I mean, quite frankly, I think that storage for the office could be handled in casework, and we might look at other ways to handle that type of storage. It seems more important to provide storage for these tables and chairs. So we can go to the next one. So the next thing that we, we worked on was, uh, since we, we developed a plan, uh, there was a plan developed for the new playground. And what this required us to do was to actually look at how we were laying out our building on site. And 
especially in the same spot it was before. But what happened is the bus drives in different con configuration than what we had originally. Um, it, it actually absorbs some of our handicap spots that we had up there, but we're still within code because we're counting the 64 parking spaces uh, up above, and I think we're still like one one over. That's not to say that we couldn't look at other options for handicapped parking, but for what it is now, I think this, this kind of works very well. Uh, you can see how we're developing or starting to think about the landscaping, creating little plazas, and the connections to the existing gazebo, the proximity of the existing program center, which is right against the Cardinal below, right along the road, the existing bar, barn to the upper right. So really, I think this worked out pretty well, but still not being convinced, what we did is we generated some renderings. So the next series looks at what this facility would look like put on to that site plan, which is something we never really had before. So the trees, I mean, there's a lot more trees out there than what we're selling, okay? So <laughs> I'm not suggesting anything you cut down that you be put in, but they're just basically shown to give you some, some sense of the feel of how this might, might develop. And of course, we didn't develop everything that was going on the playground, nor are we showing the, the graves. So so so. But you can see the program center, that block in the back, and that house behind it. And you can see the plazas and the handicap parking. Uh, the next slide shows what it might look like if the option for the administration center or area was taken. So I really think that it looks good in both ways, quite honestly. And of course, if you didn't have the addition, you could always, you know, if you look at landscaping in that area. So let's move on to the next one. So since we had this developed, we looked at different views, and this is an approach view, basically. So you see the bus route, buses coming in, kids coming out the bus. And if you go to the next slide, that's the reduced version. Next slide. Once again, this is another kind of blow up of that approach. The red area, that's the nature classroom, by the way. The art classroom. Yeah. And this is the reduced version. So then we also followed up with a couple more slides, just to kind of give you the feel of, you know, since we had had something like this developed before with trees and whatnot, um, this is a view of the back end of the building in the nature classroom, classroom, the barn, the plaza, uh, the entryway, and this is another view. So as if you had a function out, you know, I think there was talk to if this would open up and you'd have a function that would be served by the, by the kitchen and barn, this is what you'd see essentially. So that's, that's about where we are. We're looking, I guess, at this point to see if everyone's good with what we've done. And from there, we will pursue, um, engage, well, we've already engaged our consultants, but they then in line and moving forward. So that's it for this time. Thank you. <coughs> Questions? Comments? Thoughts? Can you go back to our two slides? Um, go back to the one where that is the bar hall. This side here, this corner, where it is up on the mound, all these roads are coming down in that corner. Right. We have a saddle. That looks like a huge snow trap, water trap. I mean, I, I don't know how well water is going to get off that. I mean, we're, we're developing a saddle for that area. So there's going to be a saddle to bring it all. Oh, yeah. Camp. I mean, you won't need that's it. the biggest concern I've got. I'm looking at if, if you're on the road, you've got, you got water and snow traps up there like right. I mean, there's, there's no snow. Well, yeah. <laughs> there's no way to, I'm just saying that there's no way for that snow coming off. To me, I mean, I can't, like I said, I haven't seen what it looks like. You come off that barn on that second pitch and it comes into those oh. glass windows. How are you going to get the snow off? Walter, can you go to the, the first slide of those renderings? She'll show you a little better. So I guess it doesn't show it there. She, she all that water's gonna come, you know, to me, we've got, even where your entryway comes down to where the barn is, I mean, I know you can put metal in there and do a hundred things, but I'm thinking 20 years from now, after we build that, a 
we didn't develop an issue with water damage because of the way that Craig, all I can tell you is what that's shown in that. You can't see the reverse side. We have saddles in there that are not going to be pretty from if you look if you're a bird looking down on the on the building, but you will now perceive them from the ground. When I say saddles, what essentially it is is it's hard to explain, but I, I think I know what you're it's not going to pitch down like like this. We're actually going to build up into that and to be have a positive drain towards the front of the building. So I would you know, this is not a very uncommon detail and it's going to be like a rubber roof in that area too. Mm -hmm. So it will flow down. Well, I just, I mean, I, I just keep, my brain keeps wrecking around with two foot of snow laying up there each got no <laughs> it's not going anywhere and, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, you're the architect and the engineer, this is pretty sick. You well, tell me it's going to work, I guess it's not going to work for it, but I, I just don't like the idea that something could get trapped on that roof. So it's a possibility in there, what kind of some type of snow drifts on the building. We design for it. We make sure the building is structurally sound and it can handle it. Plus, we design to make the building watertight. So, I, I'm saying that you will not have the issues in the way we design it. And 
we have a break off breakaway. So where you've got the tables, you're going to have full ceiling height. Right. That's full cool. off the ceiling, and then there's a there's a loft that you'll be able to overlook the uh, seating area. Yeah, so you can see on the red there. That's where we were looking at uh, on the lower so you park the floor plan. That's where we're kind of looking at putting the seating right now. So once we actually get the engineering done, we'll know. trying to really make this as economical as possible. Access to the restrooms is through the building? We have a 24-hour vestibule for access. That's, that was the initial plan. So that one vestibule on, on the north side would be open. There's, you know, whenever it's 24 hours, obviously it's 24-hour vestibule. Um, there could be access to put up. So the rest of the building would be shut off there? Yeah, that was the idea. And the idea was this, this second set of doors here would be locked when the, the building is closed, so to speak, but um, we do still get folks that, that use the restroom, um, primarily classmates or our share studies. Those are the few locations that is available to them 24 hours for senior. Uh, we don't mind the cars in the lot, do we? No, we don't mind when those guys come by and check on things, so um, I'm happy to make 24 hour bathrooms available. Especially, I mean, a lot of our, our trail users, too, in the warmer months, 5.30, 6 a.m., it, it's not uncommon for, you know, a dozen or so cars to be out there. People are getting a run in before work or what have you, or late at night, so he's trying to squeeze in a quick job. Um, so we want, we want to accommodate that. This, just from a, a program perspective, I want to comment that even with the, the amendments and the, the changes that, that uh, Tom and Ryan have made, this still achieves all of the goals that we originally set out in uh, with this project. If you recall, one of the reasons that we wanted to look at a space of this size and magnitude was the fact that we wanted to be able to expand our program and to include junior high students. Currently, right now, our field trip programs uh, focus on K through three, which some fourth and fifth grade, some of the most important feedback that we've gotten from all seven school corporations, that they would really love for us to be able to serve six, seven, and eighth graders. We're bounded primarily by our capacity to serve uh, kids when the weather's not nice. And when Mother Nature says that we can't, I don't have space out there, or we don't have space out there to, to house um, the students. This building gives us the opportunity to begin going from 90 kids a day uh, to 180. We would be able to offer up the same types of programming for six, seven, and eighth graders throughout the entire county. Recall, we're, you know, we're about 12,000 kids a year, 10 to 12,000 kids a year, um, just through the primary grades uh, for our free field trip programs. So we'd like to we'd like to grow that. We think the demand is there. Um, the the feedback that Dana is getting and we get in our office is that the demand for the rentals continues to be there. So we still feel strongly that the business plan that was developed I want to say it was two years ago now, maybe. Um, the way presented to the council, but that the foundation of that is still still there. Um, that people will still want to rent it, and um, if any indication this year, 2015 versus 2014, as you all know, we, we increase our prices, and yet the business is still going strong for rentals at Central Park. So um, every indication is that the model still works well from a program perspective. This achieves everything that our program staff are looking for in the building. We like the idea of being able to, to grow um, if we need to, to downsize the cost so the initial investment is a little bit more palatable. But um, from a staff perspective, this still meets all of our, all of our expectations. Additionally, one of the other things that I wanted to comment on is that uh, we are able again this year to apply for land and water funding those of you who may not remember, we applied last year. We, we missed our $200,000 grant from the DNR by one point. Um, if we choose to do that and to, to partner with the foundation again um, and uh, to receive a match, to receive the, the land gift from the Parks Foundation, um, we would still be able to move forward with that. And that would be a significant, uh, significant boost to the project in addition to the, the money that the foundation has been stewarding 
the jury? Thank you, everyone. Is there any further discussion? Any further questions for the occupants? Roll call, please. Mr. Armstrong? Yes. Skinner? Yes. Mr. Schnabel? Yes. Skinner? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. I move for the approval. Aye. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mr. Schnabel? One of the other things I wanted to have a conversation about, too, was the fact that we have funding from the foundation that's coming forward. We have the opportunity to apply for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. We have a gift from the Lillian family. We still have an application with the Regional Development Authority that was submitted last year. I have not heard from their staff as to the status of that. Obviously, they're embroiled in a much larger conversation downstate at the moment, but that is technically still out there. My hope is that this will dovetail nicely, and that's why I'm grateful that Mike and Sylvia were able to join us tonight, because I'm hoping that what will be able to happen is we'll move forward with this. We expect that we would be able to turn those documents into some sort of estimates somewhere around the same time that the county would be able to look at making some sort of larger capital investments. So I think the timing of this is incredibly good right now, especially given the impact that this would have on the number of kids we'd be able to serve, the number of folks we'd be able to utilize the facility, the number of nonprofits we'd be able to utilize as fundraisers. It's just amazing. This would really impact the community's ability to have some high-quality events out there and turn this into a facility that we'd all like to be in. Attorney report. I have three things on your attorney report this evening. First of all, as we looked at the 2015 season of activities and events at Sunset Hill Farm Park, one of the amenities that we felt was missing that would enhance our guest experience was the availability of food. And with that in mind, I forwarded to you a proposed food vendor request for qualifications that would solicit from area food vendors their qualifications for providing that service to our guests. As proposed, we would put this on the street if you approve it this evening with the due date of February 20th. I would suggest that the board appoint a committee to work with Walter and I to review the responses that we get in hopes that we might have a recommendation for the board at your March meeting. We've chosen a request for qualifications as opposed to a request for proposals because this is a little bit of a moving target. In a little bit of a sense, we are inventing the wheel. This hasn't been out there before and exactly how this would work and what events we want covered and candidly what financial arrangements we would have with the vendor are all things that would have to be negotiated and there probably would be some experimentation by the vendor as well as by us. So I'll answer any questions any board member may have about the food vendor solicitation of qualifications and after that occurs, I would ask the chairman to entertain a motion to approve it and to authorize the distribution of this to area food vendors. Any questions or comments for David? On the attachment, this is the minor point, on the attachment, the first bullet point says over a three average. That's my fault because I talked to Walter. These are things he sent me and this should be, what it should say is on a three year rolling average, approximately 50,000 cars and I'll make that change before we put it out. But the content of the response to your request for qualifications. I'm sorry. You've got four high points of content on this. Yes. Do you 
appeal, we should probably ask for a business license to prove that they're charged? Well, that would be in the negotiation stage of the process. Do you think that's the way to negotiate with them? Make sure they have license to take the insurance before you do anything? I think it's a chicken and egg thing. I mean, if that's what you want, we can certainly put it in here. Assuming you form a committee, that committee's not going to come back. I mean, the first thing the committee's going to say to somebody is, our agreement with you will require that you have insurance. Anything else? And I'll entertain that motion. A motion to approve. Approve vendor qualifications document. And distribute it out. Do we have a second? Move to adjourn without a second. Any further discussion? I just want to go on record. I'd like to see the business license to take the insurance on that. I can add that. I like that, too. I'm not sure when you say business license. I don't know if restaurants are licensed in Clark County. Are they? Well, but are you going to limit it, then, to people who have food service establishment permits? That's what it would be. I mean, somebody might go and get one, some entrepreneur who wants to be in this business. So you're saying that it has limits? Yeah. If you want to be limited, fine, to people who are already in business. Now, again, having the requisite permits and having insurance is, if I'm involved in the committee, will be an integral part in that process. As long as we don't forget that part. You have my word that whoever, if I'm involved in the committee selection process, no recommendation will come back to you absent the recommended entity having a food service establishment permit issued by the Florida County Health Department and proof of insurance. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Armstrong? Yes. I have nothing to affirm. Okay, we will function accordingly. Mr. Chairman, do you want to appoint an ad hoc committee on this to work with Walter and I from the 20th until your meeting in March? Does anyone want to volunteer for that? I'm here in the building, so I can do that. Being that close to the... But if someone else would like to... I'm fine. Okay. Okay, so then we'll... So it's going to be you. Two board members and Walter and I. Obviously, any member of the board is welcome to see what we get and add your observations or comments. Look at this case list. Now that I would be willing to put in the chamber. You have to bring your... Bring your... Bring your menu in real life. All right. Do you have other items or was that it? That's the first. Okay. The second item is I have been contacted by the successful farmer for the Pleasant Township property concerned because he read in the paper at last month's meeting you approved a test well on the property. And I think understandably he wants to know a little more about that and where it might be so he doesn't plant his product and then have it destroyed by somebody who drives a well digging vehicle. Yeah, I was under the impression and maybe someone can tell me I'm wrong that that was going to be done and completed prior to planting. That was my understanding. I don't know. I had a conversation with Tim Jones today and I asked him about it and he said that in all likelihood they will be drilling the test wells on the northwest corner of the property. It's the highest point according to their consultants and they're going to be getting water out of there and they need to be at the highest point and that would be the northwest corner which is where our maintenance is going to be as soon as we go anyway to get the main plant. And that was an area that we had already 
set aside for 10 acres. Now, he, he told me they should have, but I told him we got a lot of that run. He told me he would have a good idea of where they wanted to put those dust holes. I said, well, I need, we need to know before spring so we can keep the farm up. And he indicated to me that they would let us know that they were working with their consultants to find out exactly where they were going to go. So we should know by next month. We know where it is before April. Okay. I don't think anybody's going to grow up for Yes. Years. Did you say, Craig, did you yes. say that it's within the 10 acres? It's within the 10 acres set aside. Right? And those are, are those accessible from whatever that East West Road is? Yes. So that the, the equipment wouldn't have to go across the farm ground. And we reserve the right, I think we can talk about letting the farmer have the 10 acres if nothing was developing, but we can just start right out saying that area is off limits to the equipment that makes them away from the north, so the timing doesn't matter. Is that true or not? I think that's, I think that's a reasonable statement. Um, I think that most of you found out the cows where they want to go with it, and what exactly they're thinking about doing. Then we can say, okay, you need five acres, you need six acres, what do you need to test and how much? And then we can set we go out there like to get, how about that right here? We go out there to go out there and set the post. We can plow around it as long as it's straight on. And, and, and there is access. There is access. Is that, is that your time? Yeah. Sure. Is that the state you right here? Yep. And is that easement? Or? There, there is access, but I guarantee you that the owners that are adjacent to that That's what I are occupying, and you, in fact, there's a throwing a, a, a pitching cage on one of those, or was, maybe it's not there anymore. The middle one? The middle one? Yeah. Yeah. I have talked to the gentleman who owns, who is occupying the possession, the one in the northwest corner multiple times, and he, he's agreed, when we were talking about finding grass in there, he was going to allow us to, without any trouble, or any heavy, to pull the tractors in. He, he was going to allow us to pull tractors well, in on our property. Well, he, he said he wasn't going to squash people, I guess. And I, I don't want to say allow, well, I don't want to say that, but he, he agreed that he, he was going to allow us to pull well, in on our property. Okay, I just want to make it clear that what those people think and what actually is out there are two different things. Well, at least he was reasonable about it. He's reasonable about our property. Well, I mean, I, I said he was a nice guy about it. Jump up and down with that boom and talk. You know, our lawn is mowing for 20 years. Thank you, sir. I would urge that you educate the town, the town officials to the conversation with the property owners so that they know what they're getting into. Okay, so it sounds like at least in the interim, I should get back to the farmer and say at this juncture, because the agreement we have with him, I, what's the total with the 10 acres? It's like 60. Yes, so the total property is 63. 63. Okay. The agreement we have with him is the farm up to 63. Yeah. 15, so 15. I'm going to tell him, and I'm going to tell him at this juncture that as we did last year, the northern 10 acres, until further notice, he should not plan on property. <coughs> as we get a better picture from counts as to what they're doing, we may be able to to take that 10 acres and make it five that they need or four or whatever. Can we give him a contact person so if he gets to the point where he's ordering feed or something, he could just pick up the phone and call where are we on this? Is he not the best person for that? Yeah. I guess I'm a little reluctant. I think we need to be in the middle of this. It's our land and set the parameters for Couts and for this guy. And I, and I like the approach of saying, don't find him now that the worst case scenario is you're going to be farming 53 acres. And as we get into March, we may know more from Couts and we can tell you, okay, you're going to be farming 58 acres or whatever. Okay? And, then, and when they do these test wells, I assume they have to be there for a while? Is that the, or are they just drilling and doing their tests and draw downs? And I think it's maybe a week or two. I don't know. I don't think it's a month. So once, yeah, once they're gone, well, there is a little dirt that happens before he uh, works the ground and he, he can have it. So. I, I get the feeling that it won't be like, uh, 
maybe it would be a good idea for one of us or Ray and I to have a conversation with Ken and their engineer to find out what their expectation is at the time. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it'll all sort of, quite honestly, if we're, if we're talking about the well up in that northwest corner, it all serves the plane potentially. So, okay. You'll do that then? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
support uh, for that rezone is, is greatly appreciated. We had a number of folks that came out uh, for that, that rezone. Unfortunately, it wasn't heard, but we hope to all come back. Um, I also do want to share that uh, in January, I was able to get some time uh, to meet and discuss the project with uh, Dr. Garden, the superintendent down at East Porter High Schools. Uh, he's very excited about the project. He shared that um, they, you know, as a school corporation, they're obviously lacking, just like everybody else, in access to athletic fields. Um, there just are not enough fields for the kids down there. Uh, both for Morgan and Cowles, it's, it's, a, it's close enough to be considered for them. Um, they support the project. They're very interested in partnering with us to find out how we can, we can move forward on this as quickly as possible. Uh, so he was here for the meeting, but again, unfortunately, we were not able to move forward with that. Um, Snow has been moved out from all the parking lots. Uh, great job to the maintenance team for getting all of that going. Um, May 16th is spring out to sunset. Please mark your calendars. Uh, we will be having a game again between the uh, Sunset Hill Colonels and the Deep River Grinders. We're going to kick their butts this year. Uh, we've got a couple of ringers coming in, I hear. Um, I'm also really excited to share that our program director is not here tonight. Um, I'm not excited to say that because I didn't want her here, but because she is in West Virginia as part of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums Conservation and Education Certification Program. Um, she's texted me multiple times that she's learning a lot and incredibly grateful that all of this is coming on to her right now. Um, she's also not very excited that she figured or she found out she got there that there are 14 hour days of training about four days in a row. Mm -hmm. um, so she's getting her butt kicked, but she's learned a lot uh, and very excited to bring everything home. The <coughs> school committee did meet. Um, we also found out though they were scheduled to come before us the next month, if you recall. We wanted to start the program in April, um, so we wanted the committee to be able to come and report out in March. Um, it ends up that our chairperson for that group, Dr. McAfee, is going to be recovering from surgery. In Indianapolis that week, so we're trying to figure out how we can negotiate uh, some sort of conversation. Craig and Rich and I were trying to enable something where we can at least get a phone call or something with Dr. McAfee ahead of time. We'll reschedule it for something along those lines. So once Rich and Craig and I kind of wrap our heads around what the next step will be, um, we'll send an email out if we push back a month or whatever the case may be um, for that. Uh, I also want to mention that February 28th is the launch of open registration for Camp Funset from 9 a.m. to noon out at the garage at Sunset in the maintenance garage. We will have the registration open. Uh, it will also be online. People will be able to go to fortnightfunts.org at 9 a.m. Um, coupons went in the mail to most of the people in the neighborhood around, so most of our customers will receive us a coupon uh, for registering that day. Uh, a couple of really cool things to pull over to that we're working on. We have field trips this year. Our kids work, are going to give us some field trips. We have some more overnights, uh, and we have added Fridays to the camp. Uh, we got a lot of feedback from parents that they love Monday through Thursdays, but they really want to drop their kids off on Friday and out of the five days a week. We have listened, and uh, uh, so far, uh, we think that registration is going to go really well. So very excited about that. Um, Becky also just got back from the Girls on the Road Summit in, uh, in San Diego. She did not bring the sunshine with her, um, but had a good time, and that program continues to just absolutely explode. We had how many folks for the training in the program center this week? 52? Is that right? For 12 fire chiefs? Almost 60. Yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of folks, all these uh, young folks uh, and adults that are going to be training and working with the girls in our community who came to Sunshine Hill Farm. Uh, for the training for girls on the run. You know, I've been doing programming for a long time, and still this has got to be one of the most impactful programs that I've been able to see. So we're really excited to be a partner on that. Um, last couple of things. Uh, the staff and I completed their list of objectives and priorities. That's what I'm going to send an email out to everybody today, scheduling our, our committee kickoffs. Um, that did not happen, but that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, all of our applications were officially turned in in full for the Kane property acquisition. Um, so that has been sent off. Um, because the state decided to ask us to apply for what's called the Kelp funding rather than the Coastal Program funding, we got a lot more, or we're going to be getting a lot more from the Kelp fund than we had from Coastal. What that meant is, is that we 
Bureau to reduce the amount that was requested from the conservation part, which is the nonprofit partner in this, uh, this relationship. Um, I have asked if the conservation fund would be willing to consider funding the start of restoration work. If you recall, the goal of the acquisition project is to improve and increase migratory bird habitat in northern Florida County. That was the whole reason that they entertained the idea. Um, I suggested that maybe the application could still be the same amount, but take the remainder of the money to uh, restore the area that is currently in agricultural production. We're scheduling a meeting with Fish and Wildlife Service and the Conservation Fund to begin that process. So we're pretty excited to, uh, to have that happen. Um, last thing I want to share is uh, that the team was actually thrilled to be able to attend the state conference. Um, none of us were really excited, but we love our colleagues in Michigan City and we support local tourism. Um, none of us really like having to smell smoke all the time while we were at the conference, but we learned a ton. It was a really great time. Both Becky and I presented. I had some great presentations we delivered, uh, got to network with a lot of our colleagues, buddies, and the best part about it was um, that Drew and Deborah would join us for dinner that night uh, at the awards banquet, and I think they walked away um, with the rest of the team that we, uh, we want to we bring some part of all next year. Um, so our goal is to, to uh, deliver some awards for our state association next year, complete some of these projects. Um, it was a really great time, uh, learned a lot, got a lot of input, for, for 2015. So other than that, uh, that's all I have. I probably stole a lot of thunder from the ideas that we got here. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Walter. The Kiki Park report.
concern your own business. Uh, NIPA report. Uh, not a whole lot to report. Been pretty quiet. Uh, did some equipment moving around up at Sunset two weeks ago. Um, moved everything that we could over to over by the sawmill. We put the hay racks that we had lined them up in a row. Um, and then we moved all the rest of the equipment that wasn't frozen to the ground into the building. Um, there's just one disc that's out there that's frozen and then we're moving around. But it shouldn't be an issue as long as we'll the grass and into our field and kind of away. But once it warms up, we'll move that stuff out of the way. Um, other than that, getting materials together for finishing up doors. Uh, we got approved at our last meeting. All we have to do is go get it when we can do granary doors. Uh, once we do those, Other than that, kind of signing out for the show this year, getting some vendors and stuff lined up, entertainment. Uh, we're going to have the Farmhouse Third Answers probably back out again this year, as we did last year. Um, and other than that, I hope we get the warm soon. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions for Nick? Thank you. Uh, foundation report. I saw the, oh, there it is. Walter and I are trying to get a match taken care of that behind the grass as quickly as possible. Um, I'll leave this office now so we can get that first to the point. So, we're going ahead with the talk of the Waterbury and Science Corner in the north. Um, there's a bit about certain requirements as far as engineering and going along. We have to place a